Hello all UXers and UX design students. It's、uh, February something, depends on when I publish this video, which means it's UX internship hiring season. But yeah, if you don't already know, February is a time where the UX internship hiring starts to take place. But of course, some of those actually started in November last year, and it can go all the way to April. Which is a good timeline and context to be aware of. In this video, I'm gonna go over the UX design internship hiring process from the hiring manager's perspective. Yeah, I got to hire a UX design intern this summer or this coming summer, so I learned how it actually works from the inside. As a result, you will know what to look for, how to prepare, and we, well, in general, can hire more easily. Win-win. Just as a side note, I've made an internship series before, but that was more from the UX design intern, the applicant's perspective, which is you know still good information. If you want to check it out, link in the corner and description down below. As for this episode, I have a few things on the list, such as the screening, how many rounds, what the rounds are, what are in there, what are some common ones in Silicon Valley companies, what's the timeline, and in the end, of course, how to prepare. Given all those information, what you can do about it. Hmm, this is quite a long intro. Well, let's get started and roll the intro. Good morning, everyone. My name is Justin. I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. Just a disclaimer to put up front: this video, this episode, the process I'm talking about, or I will be talking about, is more or less tailored to or applicable to tech companies, to companies in Silicon Valley in the Bay Area. But overall, Silicon Valley companies probably have the most gruesome, thorough, rigorous, and harsh processes. If you ace these, you should also be good for other places. So, now without further ado, let's dive right into it. Well, let's go over the process. Number one. The UX internship job post. Let's start from the beginning. If a company ever decides to hire some UX design interns, UX design interns, the Bay Area, you do real design work, so you do get paid. You don't just buy coffees and sort files. If you're interested in how much you get paid or things along that line, I've made a video before. I have a link up here and description down below. So back to the subject. Since you get paid, that means the company is paying for it. The design team requests for headcounts, so the finance team can do the math to see if there is any budget for it. If it makes sense, if everything goes well, the design team will start drafting a job post for that UX design internship. A small or smaller startup will typically hire one UX intern. Some will have four. Just as an example, there were four UX design interns, including me, at Pinterest when I was interning in 2016. Some will even have 10 plus UX design interns, like Google. This is going to change things, and we will get to that once we get to the screening part. What you need to know here is that there might be, possibly, very likely, will be only one job post for this UX design internship. Exists on LinkedIn or the company website or Indeed. It will be only one. It doesn't matter how many interns they will end up hiring. They will only put up one post. Mainly because it's easy for the design team and the company, so that they don't have to manage multiple roles, multiple job posts. That also explains why some of the UX design internship job posts might require many, many things, as they might blend four different intern responsibilities into just one job post. So when you see that, don't freak out. Once you see the post, you fill in the information, you click the submit button, and you're done. You should also get an email confirmation as well. This is actually a good thing. Your application does go to a system, not a black hole. With the hiring softwares and systems in 2022, your application is safe. It's ready for us, for the hiring managers to look at. And now we can go to the next part, number two, the screening process. This is a step that where things can change 180 degrees. First of all, there's possibly a gate on the graduation date that you put into the application. This may not be public information, but I think it's worth to know. I know some companies might just want to hire rising juniors or seniors as UX design interns. Then they will set it up in a way that the system will automatically filter out, kick out all the applicants that will fall outside of the desired range. This means that nobody actually look into your application at all, and that could also mean if you get rejected really soon after you apply, that could be why. If you get past that, then the actual, the real human filtering screening process will begin. 
At this point, there are actually so many ways to screen, to filter out, to get a first pass, get a short list of some interns to do a phone screen, to do the initial interview with. And there are two main ways that I know of. Number one, for companies that have resources, where they might have design recruiters such as Airbnb or Pinterest, their recruiters will look at their resumes and possible portfolios. The hiring managers might have some criteria for the recruiters to pay attention to. For example, they might say, hey, keep an eye on those students who have a strong visual design background. We need those interns. Then the recruiters will take a first pass on the resumes and keep a pile of those who have a strong visual design background. Once they're done, they'll send those over back to the hiring managers for a second look so they know who they should schedule an initial phone call with. The second type, for companies that are smaller, probably startups, the design team might do everything themselves, meaning their UX hiring manager will go directly into the system, look at the applicant's portfolio and resume, put together a shortlist, and then tell the recruiters. So this is a shortlist, a list of applicants that we might want to talk to. After that, the recruiter will start to reach out and set up the initial phone call. When I was screening applicants, I have a list of the applicant's portfolio links in a Google Sheet, and then we'll open them one by one and look at them directly. Then a short list will be created based on the impression of those portfolio views. Then I would tell the recruiter to reach out to those who are on the short list. Yeah, you heard that right. I went straight to the portfolios. I don't even bother looking at resumes, don't even mention cover letters. Those are ridiculous. Ridiculous! I've told you in the past, if I'm hiring, I will not require you to write a cover letter. I don't like writing one. I don't want to write one. If I'm hiring, I would definitely not require you to write one. That stays true. They're just way too secondary compared to your portfolio. So make sure your portfolio is on point. And that concludes the screening part. And next is the core. Number three, interview rounds. The real interview process where you would talk to the hiring manager face to face. Well, virtually at this point in time. The rounds are, to be honest, very inconsistent from company to company. So I'm just gonna give you a few that I know of and I experience with. For UX internships, product design internships, you might run into the following. Portfolio presentation, which is one of the most standard common ones. After that, Pinterest, my first internship at MuleSoft. Number two, problem solving slash whiteboarding. This is where we, as hiring managers, we try to look at your problem solving skills. So for this particular one, we want you to share your screen. You probably will open Figma, we give you a prompt, and then you will talk through your design process in terms of what decision you're making, what research you might need, and just put up a few wireframes for us to see. Next is real-time design exercise, where they will just give you a prompt, over the phone call, you just talk through it, there's no screen sharing. So it's pretty much the second one without a screen share part. It might sound a little bit intimidating, but it's actually pretty straightforward. I've talked about it in that video, so if you are interested, check that out. Next is a take home design exercise, which is another common one, where they will give you a prompt or give you a few prompts to choose from, and then you will have to go home, open your Figma, your sketch, to put together some super high polished mockups and send those back it might take a day or two, depending on how much time they give you. There are a few companies that I interview with that they gave me the exercise, like Yelp, Uber, Robinhood, Airbnb, and Apple. Number five, cultural fit interview. This can be either a phone call or video call interview where we as hiring managers, we try to assess on your weaknesses, your strength, your self-awareness to see if you know about your strength and weaknesses. We'll ask you what you're looking for, what is your worldview, what's your design philosophy, we just talk those through. One example question we might give is like, what do you want to do after you graduate and why? So you have to walk through your rationales and probably some of your story. Number six, app critique. Both you and the interviewer will just pick an app together, Yelp, Google Maps, Spotify, pretty typical. And then you just walk through the app in terms of product thinking, the business, the interaction design, visual design, motion design, information architecture, everything that you typically would critique on somebody else's work in your studio setting. Facebook is famously one of those companies that have the app critique. They still have this round in the interview process. Last one, which is kind of a mix. You can expect, for example, cultural fit and app critique in the same interview, which means you're not gonna go too in depth into the app critique, so maybe briefly describe the experience and what you think could be improved on the top of answering some of the questions about yourself. Another combination could be cultural fit, plus what you worked on in the past. So it's like a portfolio review, except you don't share anything. And Apple had given me one of that in the past in 2017. As a UX applicant, you typically will get two to three rounds of a mix of those. Facebook, for example, has portfolio presentation plus app critique. And portfolio presentation is for sure one of the common ones. So again, portfolio, 
high priority. Therefore, for each company that you apply to, you can generally expect two to three interviews coming up. And now is a perfect time to segue this way. Segue to number four, the timeline. Your two to three rounds of interview will be scheduled differently depending on the company. What I have experienced in the past is that my interview process can be spread out across three to five weeks or even longer. Well, since I'm hiring now, I know why. Number one, when we hire UX interns or want to hire UX interns, the interview workload is on the top of what we already have on our plate. Designers have design work to do. We need to spend time in Figma, After Effects, Google Docs, meetings, etc. Which is a complicated way to say we are busy. Because of that, we don't have a lot of time to interview many interns at the same time. We have to find slots here and there to squeeze interviews in. As a result, we tend to interview one to two candidates in a week. By we, I mean UX hiring managers in general, not, not me specifically. So if there are 10 good candidates that pass the screening and interviewing two candidates per week, it will take five weeks already just for one round. So don't stress, don't sweat too much. We didn't forget about you. It's just we don't have a lot of time to work with. Number two, another situation could be that we do two to three rounds on the same day or with the following day. So that by the end of the day, we know that if the candidate is good to keep or nah to let go. This will depend on where you are in the line of the shortlist that we compile. In this process, if you are the fifth in the queue and we only wanted to hire one intern, and the first intern is already pretty good, then we might just extend an offer. So sadly, we might not even get to you, even though you are on the top of the short list. After those two to three rounds of interview, all the interviewers on the panel will regroup next week to discuss about the candidate. This is called the debrief. We are going to talk about all the green flags, yellow flags, and red flags, and decide whether to keep or let go. It's possible that we find three good candidates to keep, but we only have one UX design slot. Then it might take another week for the hiring manager to mull it over and make a final call of who to extend an offer to, which is another way to say it could take even longer. For everything that I've said so far, you might notice the UX internship hiring process is by nature not short. So this is the full UX design intern hiring process from the hiring manager's perspective. So now we can shift the focus to the UX design intern to see what they can do, what they can prep, which leads us to number five. What can you do? How you can prepare better as a design student. From the four parts that I talked about, there are actually many obvious hints and clues for you to take note of and act upon. Remember I said the design team will need to request for headcount for the UX design intern? That means it might not get approved. If it's approved, it's typically one or two openings. That means there will be a limited amount of UX internship. That means there's a scarcity. So if you see one, apply to increase your chance. Remember I said even though you're on the top of the shortlist, we still might not get to you. That means apply ASAP and set up some LinkedIn or job post notification so that when they come out, you see them. Number three, remember graduation date is an auto filter? So be aware of what you put in. One personal example I can tell you, during my last semester at Georgia Tech, I applied to three grad schools. Since I knew I was going to one, I applied for the Facebook product design summer internship. I submitted all my grad school applications in late 2016 I told Facebook recruiter my situation, which is the truth. And he said since I hadn't confirmed yet, I won't be qualified for the 2017 summer internship. What? This is ridiculous. So be careful what you put out there. Remember I said the hiring process is not short, it probably will take weeks. While you're waiting, actually, you should not wait. Use that time to keep updating and polishing your portfolio. Make it look appealing, add good case studies, create a flow that is easy for interviewers to follow and understand. Keep doing that until you sign it on. Remember I said some companies might just go straight to their portfolios as the initial screening? That again hints the importance of the portfolio. That is your impression making machine. That's your first filter. That's the make or break. I don't really like advertising too much, but this is very relevant, so I'm gonna mention it. Again, I've made a portfolio video series before. If you want to know more details about what and how to update your portfolio specifically, check out my portfolio series. Remember I said some companies go straight to the portfolio as initial screening? That also means don't spend too much time on your resume or cover letter. What's the cover letter again? Your resume may 
get you past the screening. But that's definitely not what will get you hired. If you have 10 hours, spend an hour on portfolio and one on your resume. Remember I said you would get two to three interview rounds and portfolio presentation is one of the common ones. Yeah, you see where I'm going, right? Other than that, you can also search for resources on how to prep on other ones on Google, YouTube. I have some topics covered in some of my previous videos. If you want to see a video of any of these ones, drop a comment down below and I will get to it. So that's the wrap. Is that helpful seeing the UX internship hiring process from the hiring manager's perspective? If you feel like I'm missing something or there's something else that you see in your interview, feel free to share down below. I read and respond to every comment. There are more future videos I plan to do, so if you have any strong preferences on which one you want me to cover first, simply let me know in the comment section down below. Well, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful or insightful, please destroy the like button for YouTube algorithm. This is still a small channel, so every like counts, and I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. If you want to see more UX career tips or design videos like this, consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Cheers!